Hello everyone. Hello. My name is Matt. My name is Mark. And today we're going to be talking about the parachute. So oh, parachute. here it is, two pictures of a parachute. And so who created the parachutes? Let's see. Well, Leonardo da Vinci, he drew a picture of the parachute. He never made one, but he actually designed. Oh, this guy? Designed. Yep, that's him, I guess. I've never actually oh, wow. seen him before. <laughs> well, I haven't sure, but I just forgot what he looked like. But he, it's kind of a sketch. He drew the design, I guess, of what the idea of the parachute, but he actually never made one. Oh. And this is the picture. This was the first parachute that was capable of slowing down a man's fall from a high place. Oh. So it's a little different than the parachute you see today where yeah. you're strapped almost like a backpack and you're strapped on, into it. It's almost like a little basket there. But this was the first parachute Someone, they jumped from a high place and it slowly went to the ground. Yeah. <laughs> you might fall out or something. I don't think I want to be the first person to try it out. <laughs> Next, see. So how does a parachute work? Well, let's take a look. Is it going to go? Let's see. There we go. So when you first, of course, now a parachute is a, it's a device used to slow down an object or a person falling towards the ground. So they jump out of an airplane, you're just going to fall straight to the ground. Oh, wow. So there are two forces acting on the falling person, gravity and air resistance. So right now there's no air resistance or very little. So he's falling really fast. Yeah. And he better have something pretty soon. So see, the parachute oh. opens up. As the parachute opens, the air resistance increases. So he slows down. Yeah. So he has the gravity is going down, the air resistance is going up, and so the air is going up with the parachute. So now the air resistance is more than the gravity. Oh, wow. Okay. And he can slow down and safely the land. parachute will slow him down and he will safely land to the ground. Oh, wow. Have you done that before? I've never tried it. Uh, have you? I think I'm too scared. I wouldn't <laughs> do it. I've had some friends who have tried it and um, I, uh, I don't. I don't think I could do it. Oh, well. So why do we use parachutes? Well, one is the military. Yeah. Of course, you've seen the army, people in the army or navy, they might use parachutes. Um, skydiving or Skydive. paragliding. Drag racing, which we'll explain later. Airplanes. Airplane. And space travel, Baseball. using the spaceships. Yeah. So how do they use parachutes in the military? Well, they've used them for many years now. Um, they drop soldiers off where planes cannot land wow. or for a surprise attack. Like in this picture here, I think this was probably in World War II, which was many years ago. Um, I know America and maybe in Great Britain, they dropped a lot of soldiers off into France around Germany because um, they were trying to um, help Europe because from Germany's invasion. Germany. So they dropped uh, thousands of soldiers. There's one in, one time where they dropped over many thousands of soldiers um, into France. Oh, wow. Okay. And then this is more, I guess, modern. Modern day, yes, yeah. where they're jumping out of the airplane. You got to jump off really fast. And so I've had oh. some friends who are in the military. They've had to do this. But yeah, it's a little scary. Yeah, it looks scary. And when you're in the military, you can't, you have no choice. You're going to have to do it. You have to do it. Okay. Another way they, the military will use parachutes is dropping military supplies, trucks, and even tanks off in places where planes cannot land. But tanks are really heavy. Yeah. That's, How does that work? I don't know. It's amazing. But here's a truck. A, they just have to use a really big parachute. I've seen pictures of it. And it's pretty amazing to see that. That parachute can actually slow a tank down from dropping oh. to dropping to the ground. Here it looks like some kind of supplies. It looks like big crates of something. But yeah, they will drop the truck and it'll land safely to the ground. So what is skydiving? Skydiving is, again, something I've, neither one of us have never tried and I don't know if I would want to do this. Like I said, I've had a friend, he did this one where if you're a beginner sky, beginning skydiver, you will be attached to another person who's done it many times and they will, they have the parachute and they will pull the cord 
and you just kind of float with it's them. It's launch. Yeah, you're just along for the ride. But even that, I don't want to do. But yeah. you just jump out of the airplane, and then you release your parachute, and you'll float to the ground. And if you see them, they're pulling a cord, and it's to help them with the directions, directions. to which way to go, because when you're skydiving, sometimes you, you don't want to land in a tree or other things that could hurt you. So they have to, and sometimes they need to land in one certain spot so they can actually kind of steer the parachute with the cords they pull. And so what is paragliding? What's the difference? Paragliding is, you're not, you don't jump out of an airplane. And I know you have this in Taiwan in a few places. I know in, near Geelong, near Elon, there's a couple places you can actually jump off the cliffs with, and then you can paraglide down to, one is you go down to the beach. Another one is they just take you out like this and you float around in the air for a while and then they take you back around and you land safely onto the ground. So you don't really go down, see they're pretty high up. Here's the beach down here. And it's dangerous. really high. So I'm not even sure about this one, but so you just kind of run, you have a parachute, run and jump off your, go off a cliff and you kind of float, either float around and then go back or you float and down, all the way down to the beach, down at the bottom. Oh. So it's a little different than skydiving. You're not, you don't go so high up and you're not jumping out of an airplane. Another way we use them. Ah, so, so when we need they use the, uh, them for drag racing? Drag racing is this kind of, it's like a, Kind of racing. It's very pretty popular in America. There's all kinds of different race cars, um, ones that go around the track many times. Like maybe you've seen on TV where they race for two or three hours. They're just going many times. This one is just one, one line. line. They go about, I don't know how much kilometers, they go about 300 miles per hour, That's a lot. which is very, very fast. They'll shoot down. So they're going very fast, but then once they go, the cross the finish line. They need to stop. Yeah, and so the parachute helps them to stop and slow down and stop oh, wow. more quickly. Because I don't, yeah, these things, they're going so fast, they need to put the brakes on. I don't know if brakes are gonna do the job. No. So the parachute helps them a lot. And So why do airplanes use parachutes? Similar to the cars, um, they, when the airplane lands, sometimes they need to stop quickly the runway is not long enough, and so they have to stop very quickly. Like sometimes the air, these military planes, they land on these aircraft carriers, which- Really short. Yeah, the runway is not long like an airport runway. So they have to be able to stop pretty quickly. So how do they use parachutes in space travel? Okay, this is the space. space shuttle. And so it's similar, I guess, when like, just like the military planes when they're landing, it's just to help them to Fish. land safely, Stop. slow down safely, safely. And here, this is another kind sometimes. Sometimes when they come from space, they land, it's just like an air, the space shuttle is almost like an airplane. But this, sometimes they will land like this in a space capsule. They come from wow. space and it just comes back into the Earth's atmosphere and then they land safely into the ocean. Yeah, so they the have water. to parachute down and then they land into the ocean and someone will then come pick them up. So, ah. so those are just some of the different ways that parachutes are used today. And now we're gonna make our own parachute that you can make even at home. You probably have most of these things at your house already. Um, you probably have plenty of plastic bags and so it's very easy to make these, and so we're gonna make a parachute. So what do you need? Some of the materials, we need either a small plastic or a paper cup. Okay, paper cup, here's a paper cup. You probably have those, anything, either one will work. Paper or plastic. Okay. We need a hole puncher. Hole puncher. So here's a hole puncher. And now if you don't have this, there'll be other things you can use to make a hole if you need a pencil or you have a, something sharp you can just punch a hole with in case you don't have a hole puncher. String, string some kind ah. of string. Yarn yeah, or string, string, anything will work. Scissors, Scissors. because later you'll need to cut the string. And of course you need your plastic bag. Plastic bag. And any size, we have this, this is probably the size you get 
If you ever go to the breakfast stores and you buy your breakfast, this is probably the size you get most of the time. So it's a good size bag to use. You could use, I guess, a bigger bag if you wanted to. Um, either size would work. And this is just um, in case you want to put something in your parachute. You can try it with nothing inside it. Or you can put little toy figure, marbles, marbles, little bouncy balls, or any kind of toy figures you have at home. Anything you have at home, you can put in the cup and just try it out to see how, how it works differently. If you try it empty or you try with something in the cup and you can see how it floats to the ground faster or slower. Oh. And again, oh, I forgot, yeah. And this is just pencil or chopsticks in case. Chopsticks. You don't have a hole puncher, you can use something to punch the hole in the bag and the cup as well. And some other materials you may need, you don't have to have these, are just colored pencils, crayons, markers, glitter, or anything you want to use to decorate your cup. Sometimes the paper cups already have something on them, but the cups we have today, they're just plain white cups, so if you want to decorate your cup, you can also get some things to decorate it. So first we need to get our bag. Bags, okay, here's Let's see. bags. Ah, one bag for you. So you get the bag and get your okay. hole puncher. Just go as far as the hole puncher will go. You don't want to go too, if you go too low and after you tie the string, it might break through and then it won't work. So you want to make sure you go, um, go a little high up on the bag and then just push down. Again, it'll just, like this one is not, oh well, yeah, it is actually making a hole. So you can, it goes up about an inch, maybe half an inch up the bag. So just get the hole and then Can punch you use chopsticks as well? Yeah, you can use chopsticks, yeah. You can just make sure you punch a hole through the circle. Just to, this one doesn't want, there we go, okay. So once you got the four holes, then you get your string. Now we've already cut our string. You can usually make it around, I'm not sure centimeters, I tried inches, it's usually around 14 inches. So we've already cut ours, and so it's about this long. And I guess you could do a little longer, you don't want to make it too short. You need four, each parachute needs four strings. So how many you got three? There's you one. one. So there's two more. Two, three. Mm -hmm. And there we go. Four. So you need four strings. I, I only got three. There we go. There. So, so four strings. So you got four strings. So and then you're going to tie each string on from each hole of the bag. So there should be four holes. And so you're going to tie your string to the bag. To the bag. One time might not work good enough. And so just. Two times? Yeah. Very simple. Just make a simple knot. Now you have to get your cup. Oh, you need a cup. Okay. Let's get a cup. And this is where you probably need a hole puncher. It works better if you can. Like I said, if you, if you don't have a hole puncher, I don't think a chopstick, you probably need a pencil or something sharp just, to make a hole through the... But um, so again, you want to try and... Don't go too far down the cup. And you're going to make a hole on each side. And also the holes need to be as even as possible. Like, you don't want to make one hole here and then the other hole farther down. So try to make it as even as you can and on each side. So you got two on this side. And always mark it to see which one. Don't get them confused. And then you do the same thing on the other side. So just have two holes on each side. So you, have, you should have four holes in your cup. Two on each side. This is the tricky part. It's, that's happened to me many times. I've done, made these. Now you're going to have to tie your string from the, that's on your bag to your cup. But one thing is like, make sure you don't get your strings twisted or mixed up or when you're done tying, it's going to be twisted. It should be straight. But if your strings get mixed up, it's going to cause problems later. So you need to really make sure that you tie, so like here's my strings on this side of the bag, so I'm gonna put them on these two holes here. Can so, I have different lengths? 
No, you need to really, yeah, this is where you need to, again, try to make it as even as you can. You don't want it one to be short, one to be long, because then your parachute will be kind of crooked, it won't be straight, and it might, might affect the way when it, you throw it when it's landing. So try to make it as even as you can. I've never used a ruler to measure it, just kind of guess. Tie it as much as close as you can as each one. Let's see. Let's see, as I move my cup around, I need to make sure I... Okay, so... Make sure I got them on the right side. Okay, so that's one thing I always had trouble with. Okay. See? Uh, 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 uh. There, yeah, that's going to work. Well. Nope. Oh, yeah. So just tie again each string in the four holes of the cock. So there's two of them so far. Now I got to do the other two. And I want to make sure I get them, put them in the right hole and don't get them oh. crooked. Last one. What I still have two to do. So once. Are you done already? Oh, I got it straight. Pretty straight. They're as even as possible. And I didn't get them twisted this time. They're uh, mine is twisted. Oh, almost. Not too many. But actually, if, so it work okay. No, no, it's fine. So here you go. You got all four strings tied to the bag and also to the cup, and they're pretty even. Yes. So now later, if you have time, if you wanted to, you could decorate your cup. You could draw whatever you want. If you have a white cup, you could just do whatever you wanted to to the cup and oh, yeah. draw something on it, decorate it, and or you could just leave it like this. So here's the parachute. And so basically what you can do, you can just try it outside, just hold it like that and you can actually throw it in the air and watch it float down to the ground. Hey guys, how you doing? We're here on the third floor of the school and we're gonna test out our parachutes that we just made earlier. And first time we're gonna throw it, they're gonna be empty. The cups are gonna be empty. There's nothing inside. Just gonna see how they float to the ground. So just see how long it takes. Ready? Ready. One, two, three, go. Uh. Uh. It's okay. So they went pretty slow. They just kind of floated. It's, Right now, there's no breeze. There's no wind right now. It's, so if there's a little breeze, it actually works a little better because the, the wind can kind of fill up the bag and it'll float a little better and it'll kind of Floats away. go away yeah, a little bit so it won't go straight down. If there's too much wind, it won't work very well either probably, but right now, it's just a, it's pretty still. There's no breeze. Now we're going to put some marbles. We're gonna, one of them is going to have one marble. This is... And the other one's gonna have four marbles. We're gonna compare to see, you can see how fast and what's the difference, how fast they drop to the ground. Two, three, and four. And you can put anything in these cups. You have a little toy figure or just any kind of, you can put anything in your cup and just to see, you can see how, how it affects the, how fast it goes down to the ground. So we're gonna try, this one has four marbles, and Marks has one marble. So let's see how the difference is. Ready, one, two, three, go. I'm not sure which, okay. So you can see the difference in how they floated down to the ground. 
So now we're going to try one real, we have one more. Ooh, come on. With um, seven, let's just do the rest of the mark. Okay, we'll do red against nothing. So one. Are we going to, yeah, do. Two. Two. Three, four, five, six, seven marbles. So we'll just do, actually, we'll do this one that's, you do one empty and one. So this one's going to be seven marbles. One is going to be empty. So it's a very, quite a big difference. The cup's much heavier. So we'll see what the difference is between seven marbles and the empty cup. It's okay, that's fine. So, okay. Yeah, okay. Ready? One, two, three, go. You saw the one with eight marbles hit the ground much faster, is much heavier. So depending on what you're doing with the parachute, you might need to get a bigger parachute maybe if something's really heavy. So, well, that's all for today. We hope you had a great time. And if you're at home, you have a chance, you get a plastic bag, you can make your own parachute. And if you want to, you can also just throw them up in the air and then watch it float to the ground and you can put whatever you want inside it and just have fun. So we hope you have a great time. Have a good day. Bye.